Algebra 1, number 1.5c. We're going to talk about combining, collecting like terms in this video. Algebraic expressions contain terms, and each term is separated by an operation sign like a plus or a minus. In this expression, it has three like terms, and they have a coefficient, that's the number in front of the variable, with a variable a. Remember the coefficient is the number that sits in front of the variable, and if that variable goes away, he's just a plain old number. He's nothing special. As long as that variable's there, though, he's a coefficient, okay? So we've got three terms that are alike. They're like terms, and they have a coefficient with a variable a. Well, they're all the same. They're all alike. And we can collect and combine these together to make one term. So here it is again. We have 2a plus 5a plus 3a. And it's like saying 2 apples plus 5 apples plus 3 apples. We add the coefficients, 2 plus 5 plus 3, and we get 10. It's like having 10 apples, or 10a. Okay? Now, don't worry about how many a's are here. The a just goes along for the ride because they're all alike. Don't worry about putting exponents, like putting this to a third power because there's 3 a's. We don't do that. We're adding. Okay? The only time we would do that is if we're multiplying. So we're adding, we just combine the coefficients. Okay? So please remember that. When you're adding these, the variables go along for the ride. When you're multiplying them, then we'll worry about exponents. So don't worry about it right now. We're going to talk about that coming up. Okay? Right now, we just let the variables go for the ride. So in order for the terms to be like terms, they have to be the same. The variables have to be the same. The exponents have to be the same. So look at this one. We've got 3xy plus 4x plus 5y. Every single term is different. The variables are not the same. Nope, nope, nope. Look at this one. 3x squared plus 2x plus 4. This one doesn't have a square for the x, and this one doesn't have an x or a square. Nope, nope, nope. They're not like. Look at this one. The coefficients are different numbers, but the variables and the exponents are identical. So yes and yes, and these can be combined together, okay? Look at this one. We've got 5mn and 4mn. Yep, they're identical, but this 8m, nope, he's not the same. What we would do is combine these two together as one term and then put plus 8m at the end, and I'll show you how to do that coming up. We have 7x squared y cubed, and we have 6x squared y cubed on this side, but this is just 2x squared y. There's no cube there, so no. Because that's missing, that little 3 exponent, it made the whole term not alike. These two can be combined, and then we'll put plus x squared y at the end after we combine these as a 13, because 7 plus 6 is 13. I'm going to show you how to do that in a couple seconds. Now we've got ab plus ab plus b. Well, these two are alike, they're identical, but this b isn't. So we would combine these two and put the plus b at the end of the expression. All right. So it helps to put circles, squares, or triangles around like terms when you're first learning how to do this because it helps you identify them. Okay. So we're going to collect like terms. We've got 3a plus 4a. Well, this is an easy one because there's only two terms here and they are alike. We combine them using distributive property. We've got a 3 and a 4 in parentheses with an a on the outside, see? And if we try doing the math, we get 3a plus 4a. When we do this distributive property, you see how it works out? That's 7a. There's a 7, 3 plus 4, and then we have the a, all right? Now, here's our friend the invisible 1 that I always talk about. We've got b plus b plus 4. Identity property, and our friend the invisible 1 is actually sitting here, see? In front of every loan variable, there's actually an invisible 1 keeping them company. So that means we have 1 times b plus 1 times b plus the 4. Now, the 1 times b and 1 times b are like terms, but that plus 4 isn't, so he's just going to go along for the ride. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the invisible 1, there's a link to the invisible 1 video in the description of this video, okay? So now we've got 1b plus 1. 1 times b plus 1 times b plus the 4. These are like terms. So we do 1 plus 1 inside parentheses with the b on the outside using distributive property. And 1 plus 1 is 2, so we have 2b. And the 4, because it's an unlike term, just goes along for the ride. We just It's not alike, so we just put it at the end. After we combine these, we just put the plus 4 at the end, see? 
So let's try this one. Look at all of these different terms. So here's what I'm talking about. It helps to put circles and squares around the terms when there's so many of them. So let's put a circle around all the M terms. And now let's put a square around all the N ones. See how it makes them pop out at you? So you can combine the like terms. So now we know we have a 2M and a 4M, and we can use the commutative property to change their order to put them together. And then we've got a 5N and a 3N, and we put them over there. Now we can use the distributive property. We use a distributive property on these, and then we use it on these. So we're going to use it twice. This one comes out to be a 2 plus a 4M plus a 5 plus a 3N. See how we did that? We grouped and did this together with the distributive property, and then we did this with the distributive property. See how they went down like that? See how we did that? And that means we have 6M plus 8N. And it really does help. And if you have another one, you can use a triangle, you can use a pentagon, if you have a lot of terms. But usually the circles and the squares are enough. Occasionally you use a triangle. All right, let's take a look at this one. This is going to do the identity property again. We've got 6x to the third power plus x to the third power. Now, our friend the invisible 1 is here, okay? That identity property is going to help us. That means we've got 6 times x to the third power plus 1 times x to the third power. We take the coefficient, the 6 and the 1, we add them together, and... Uh, using distributive property, we've got the x to the third power on the outside. And yes, we can do that. x to the third power is on the outside. And that means with distributive property, we've got 6 times x to the third power plus 1 times x to the third power. And it gets us back to our original one, see? 6 plus 1 is 7. We have 7x to the third power. Now, if you didn't think about our friend the invisible 1, you might think that this is just 6x to the third power. It's not. That one is sitting in front of that lonely variable, okay? All right, here's the last one. What if we just have x plus x or a plus a or z plus z? Our friend the invisible one is there. That's the identity property. So we have 1 times x plus 1 times x, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 2x using distributive property. And actually, you can just look at this and say, you know what? There's an x here and there's an x there. There's two x's. See how we did that? It's no different than saying we have a 5MN and a 4MN. We got 9MN, see? And if we did do this one, we would have 9MN because this is the same and this is the same. And we would combine them to have 9MN. And because this was not alike, we would just put plus 8M at the end, see? He would just go along for the ride because he's not alike. Combine the like ones and then whoever's not a like goes for the ride and just gets added on with the plus or the minus sign, okay? Whatever's in the, the expression. All right, so that's how to combine and collect like terms, and we're going to talk about writing algebraic ex expressions in 1.6, okay? So I hope I'll see you there. We're making it through Chapter 1. We're a little more than halfway. See you next video. Bye.